Hi, welcome everyone. In today's video, I am going to show you how to do a quantile and quantile regression in R and do some relevant statistics that will go with it. So, we will start this tutorial. So for that, uh, I will start with these commands. So, for that, first of all, you have to set a directory where you want to export the tables or the graphs. So I will run, I will set the directory and you can see the files in the directory. And then I will load the relevant libraries that I want to run. So there is contract for quantile regression, deploy to uh, modify data, heaven to read. Heaven libraries usually used to read data, data. And, and in this example, since the data is not included, we can remove it. Then there is a data management, statistics, linear regression, data descriptive, and reading Excel file. So these are some libraries that we are going to load. And all of them are loading one by one. After these libraries, I will load the data file. This is the data file that I am going to use in the example. In this, I am going to pick two variables, CO2 and renewable energy. I will filter them for uh, our missing values. Is not is dot n method. And the, the missing values will be removed. I will declare the data as a panel data using this command. So when you see it now, it's a panel data. It has an identifier here. Okay. Then uh, I will select a new data file where there's only two variables, and then identifier is here. Then you can see the descriptive stat using this command, and here you can see that the the p-value is significant. The data is not normal, and so this means that there is a that you. There's a need to do the quantile based model because the data is not normal. You can also you see the IQRs if you want to observe their variations. Then I will start with a scatter plot. So for that, the library is car. And when I run this, this, uh, this graph has an advantage that it plots a uh, histogram on the borders. So it will show you that there's a uh, there is uh, too many outliers here, so data label need to be changed because the data by label is actually CO2. So I will go here and change the label CO, CO2. So this way the data is loaded. So I will go from top and I will try to make sure that you can read the data. This command is for the directory and other commands are reviewable. I will move it to the next line so that you can see the commands and, and, and you can be uh, adopted by viewing in the video. So this way, if I run this command again, it will make a graph that has CO2 in it. So if I zoom it, you can see the patterns in the data. So there are outliers on this side. So there are few countries which are very high pollution because very low renewable energy. That's why it is negatively slow. Then there's a graph library called performance analytics that is used to make a good uh, scatter plots and his correlation matrix. So when I make this, uh, let, let it run and I will zoom it up and you can see that there's a histograms on the, on the, the diagonal, for diagonal and scatter plot and uh, moving average fit on first and then correlation and its significance on the third and the second and then fourth, third. So this way you have detailed associations of univariate and multivariate and then what i'm going to do is i'm this command used to split the this variable into five quantiles and then i will uh, it will create a new variable in, in df.quant and it will number the quantile based upon the position of this data and then i can split the data into five quantile subsets using this method and then i will do the correlations for each and, and since I have divided the data into five sub, sub data sets and got the correlations, we can plot those correlations to have a look if the correlations are changing across quantiles of uh, dependent variable. So this way the data is merged and then I will plot the data using this command. So when I run this, you can see here that the correlations are changing because of changing the quantile of dependent variable. So it means uh, the slopes, since the associations are varying, there's a chance that the slopes will also vary. So this may lead to 
you cannot assume that the slopes are homogeneous across the data. That's why this is an evidence that there must be need for quantile on quantile regression. First of all, that is not normal. You have gone towards quantile, and since the correlations are not homogeneous, so you go towards quantile on quantile. And then we start with the quantile regression. Uh, we'll select the variables like this and then set the quantile numbers from 0.5 to 9.95 and then do the quantile regression so when i run this you will have a table for coefficients and values for an intercept for all positions and then if i need to do detail if you run this command you will get outputs for each you can get the p values for each quantile and results and i will store them in this matrix using this loop so that I have a table where the slopes and p-values are added. So let me run this. So this, it made a new data, QR1. So here you can get the coefficients and the p-values. Okay. And then you can store it in a table and it will be stored where you have the set the directory. So when I run this, you can come here and see the data is stored. This way you can plot the graph in Excel or even in R using, uh, you can read the data again. I have showed so that you can see how the data is read. And this is new data file. Uh, where it is, yes, new data file being read. And its name is keyword underscore data. Now I'll plot the coefficients and make sure that it shows that P variable is significant or not significant. So when I run this, you can see this graph is showing me the coefficient values they are increasing uh, in terms of negative value so at higher quantiles of co2 the effect of uh, renewable energy is higher so more the polluted country more effectiveness of renewable energy they will observe this now i will run the function that is used to do run for the uh, qqr regression this what this regression does it will uh, to create weights so that uh, the sample is adjusted for the uh, changes in the size of the sample because of different quantiles um, and it will it will extract uh, the slope and the p-value and i will i will store them in a new matrix and before this is the matrix where all zeros are there but i will store it using this loop where i will run the regression uh, for for dependent variable and and changing the loop because of independent and then store the slope and the p values and i will write the table when it is completed then i will write the table uh, let it complete it usually takes time now i will write the table and table is qqr with p values so when you go in the excel file and qqr with p values you will see the coefficients and their p values a bit together so most of the p values are significant so so but in your case there might be a case where they are insignificant that's why for safety the p values are calculated now we'll start with uh, this is an extra command I will start with uh, uh, reading that file again and storing the coefficient and p-value separately and then merging them with uh, the quantile values of x and y for x and y axis then uh, joining uh, create a data for coefficient values and then I will make a they read the data for 3d graph and then plot 3d for coefficients when you run this it will open as like this and if you increase you will have a 3d plot where you can set it accordingly where you make you want to make it proper readable so the title this is the title so you can move it in a way that title goes to the top and you can notice that uh, notice that the the graphs is not linear there is a huge shape because of increase z axis is renewable energy and x axis is co2 and y axis is marginal effects so you can arrange it in a way where it is readable for you and then you can take a screenshot and you can make like 
let, let me bring the x-axis on the x-axis so that you can make it readable. So you, this is isometric view of the graph. You can arrange it in a way so that you can explain it. And, and this way the perfects are here. And the next graph, what we are doing is that I am plotting the p-values and adding a layer for uh, significance and non-significance. When you run this, and let me zoom. Uh, let it run. So it's saying p value surface is not found. So let's see where it is. Uh, let me close it. p value surface is, is not found for it. So it is actually, it should be made uh, using a command. Let, let's see where it is. So there is a p values. For p value surface, we need to run this command to data, get the data. Now I will run this. Now you can see that uh, there is a, this line that is at 0 0.05 uh, so that you can have uh, a significance level but all the dots except the three, two are above it. So all cases are significant except two cases which is also evident in the Excel file if you open it up. You notice that the first few cases were insignificant. Here one and two while all others are significant. So this shows that one, two, and three. Other than that, all others are significant. So at very low levels of CO2 and renewable energy, the effect of renewable energy on CO2 is insignificant, but gradually at all levels, it is effective. So this is the graph that we studied. Uh, this is the analysis of quantile and quantile regression that you can do uh, for your study. The secondly, the, the, the base paper where the counter and counter regression has been done, they also compared the um, coefficients generated from quantile regression. I will move it here. And then uh, coefficients generated from quantile and quantile regression. What they did, they, they, they made an average uh, so I will do is uh, a v r a average and then coefficient for all quantile values. So I will select it up this comma this comma this this. So I will select all of them one by one. V uh, eleven is done. And, uh, okay, then this. You can also do that in uh, R, but I am going to show you in Excel so that you can see their patterns. So let's assume I have selected all of them like this, and this is their average. Uh, I have not selected all of them, there is still one left, and when I move it down, uh, it should be similar, it, the pattern should be similar, but since the, the formula is not changing here, I have to make sure that it should change. For that, I have to remove the dollar sign from here. So this way you can correct the commands and compare. So we saw in the Excel file how the comparison is done. This thing is also done in this R, so I will, I am going to show it. So I will pick... Uh, I will compare, I will create a compare file where I will C bind, column bind the QR regression data and coefficients of QQR. And then I will take an average of all the 19 QQR coefficients across each quantile and, and using this row means formula. And then you can see the compare, there are data variables with the coefficient of QREG and coefficients of QQR and the average of QQR. Then I will compare the, compare the differences. If I run this, and you will see a variable that is showing the difference. We can also plot that using this command. Where I will pick the tau as x and differences on the y using ggplot. And you can see 
the differences in the coefficients. The major reason of the differences would be that the uh, and and you can notice that the differences are starting to creep up from uh, it, it's all the way around. So the difference is not zero anywhere. The major reason would be that the the distribution uh, of the independent variable and the dependent variable both matter while creating the effect of uh, re renewable energy on uh, CO2 emissions. So you can plot this. So you can notice that that if you this actually shows us that uh, the difference between the assumption that uh, the effect of uh, independent variable is linear uh, and non-linear. So the difference is if they are high. Uh, the, if the differences are high, it means that the, there will be an error in assuming that Q reg is an appropriate regression method. So so you can use this to solve your problem. So thank you very much for watching. Do try to estimate this uh, model for your data set and do let me know uh, how you like the, the extra statistics that are added into command to for you to get um, to, to create uh, evidences about uh, evidences for your data analysis and justifying the need for uh, quantile and quantile regression. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Do share it to your colleagues and and, and do let me know in the comments uh, how do you how successful you were in generating good results and how successful you were in explaining the integrations. Thank you.